Roseanne Barr, did you see what she said today? She said she doesn't see a 2024 election even happening in the United States. I don't think we're going to have no election. You want to bet money? I'll bet. How much? I'll bet big. I don't think we're going to have no election. $1,000. All right. Shake hands. I do not want to hear that. I mean, it's possible because if Russia does technically declare war or we declare war, then he can stay in. Right. He could declare martial law or you could literally go into the War Powers Act, which then takes him out of the occasion. And then you have an entire emergency set up right there. This is a conspiracy theory. I'm going to admit that straight up. But at this point, I am convinced that the Democratic Party does not want to win the 2024 presidential election. Not because they're losers, but because in some cases, losing is actually winning. Okay, so at this point, they've already canceled primary elections in four states, Tennessee, North Carolina, Massachusetts, and Florida. So not only are they deliberately disenfranchising their voters, but their anointed candidate, Joe Biden, has the lowest approval rating of pretty much any candidate in modern history. It's hard to make a case that this is a winning formula. Now the question is, why wouldn't they wanna win? How does that make any sense? Well, the most important thing that we have to understand is that the Democratic Party is not a public service organization. It is first and foremost, a private corporation. And the job of any corporation, as we know, is to make money. But it's hard for them to make money when they govern because, and this is the huge conundrum for the Democratic Party always, is that part of their party platform, in theory, is supposed to be anti-corporate. Now, don't get me wrong, the Republican Party also only cares about money, but they can do so more honestly because that is their party ethos. Cut taxes, deregulate, become a billionaire. That's the American dream. And if you can't achieve it, it's got nothing to do with systemic injustice. It's 100% your fault. Now back to the money part. It just so happens that Trump is a fun raging machine for the Democrats. Nobody ever talks about this, but just look at how much money the Democrats raised in 2020 versus 2016, nearly triple. And, and look at Republicans, pretty much the same. And of course, who is about to be president if Joe loses? Hence, Joe Biden for president. Take it or leave it, we don't care. You see, losing, in the case of the Democratic Party, can actually mean winning. Hello again, everyone. Hey, it's me. Right, let's have a look. Where do we start? So we've had our first two videos, and we've got two different theories. One is no election, and one is that the Democrats just don't want to win. I don't believe they don't want to win at all. That's silly. Of course they want to win. Unfortunately, they, they've got Joe Biden, who can't string a sentence together, can't walk properly, and is not a fit president for the United States. They could go with Kamala Harris, but Kamala Harris, no one really likes her. So I think there's another option out there, and the other option is Michelle Obama, and I think we're going to find her. We've already heard Barack Obama say he would like to be able to run everything behind the scenes and have somebody doing the face of it for him, obviously because he can't run for a third term. Yeah, I mean, check this video out. If I could make an arrangement where um, I had a, I had a, a stand-in, a front man, or front woman and, and they had an earpiece in and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff and then I could sort of deliver the lines but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony. Wow. I, I'd be fine with that. Donald Trump's on his way and his team says that they requested Joe Biden put his ears up for inspection, that they let them have a look and see if there's any devices in there that would help him during the debate. Joe Biden's campaign has said that it isn't true that they ever agreed to that kind of inspection and they're certainly not agreeing to it now. There is a slight possibility there would be no election, but let's face it, that's just not going to happen. There is a lot of stuff going on in Israel at the moment, and I think you're going to find that America's going to back off a bit there. So I think it's either Trump or Obama again. Mrs. Obama, obviously. On to the next. This terrifying situation is about to come true, and 2024 may be the start of a new ice age. Citizens were terrified after scientists confirmed that Italy and the rest of the world is in big danger and there's not much we can do. Volcano Campi Fragre is said to be the world's second most powerful volcano and it's about to erupt. And when it erupts, it can cause the same damage as Pompeii to the world. The issue is that Campi Fragre currently lays on top of magma that is reported to be connected to Mount Vesuvius. This means that when Campi Fragre erupts, it's believed both volcanoes could go off at the same time, causing not only destruction of Italy, but possibly turning the entirety of Earth into a permanent winter for up to three years. 
not only affecting the crops, but the air quality and our drinking water won't be safe anymore. Currently, there is a big chance Campi Fragre could go off in the very near future, with 1,100 earthquakes happening near Naples in just the past month with a study from the Communications Earth and Environmental Journal saying that this eruption is a realistic possibility. Time to head to the moon. First of all, going to the moon and setting up a home on there is an awful idea. It's more inhospitable than the Earth, and I'm guessing he was only joking anyway. In terms of the volcanoes, it's happening all over the world. I think we're going to see a lot of volcanoes going up. There's a lot of movement going on. Now, what the governments are going to do is blame climate change for everything we're going to see in the next year, and it's not climate change. It's just something that's got to happen. So we need to kind of be wary of that. I mean, I live in the UK, so the chances of me seeing volcanoes going up are zero. But I'll definitely be keeping an eye out on what's happening all around the world. Stop scrolling. This is huge. It's going to affect you, your family, and everything in the future. Okay, check this out. Scientists are finally acknowledging that they got the solar cycle predictions wrong. So instead of the solar maximum peak being in 2025-2026, it's now coming sooner. So NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center finally said that they revised their prediction of the solar maximum being 2025. They said that the increasing amount of solar flares and solar activity that we are having is coming quicker than we thought. And that the prediction that they had with the current solar cycle is definitely way off. And that we are going to get this explosive peak in solar activity a lot sooner. So roughly every 11 years, we have these solar cycles. Now we've been in this one since 2019. And then after our solar maximum peak, it will go back down into the solar minimum. Now, what does this mean? It means that the amount of light that is penetrating our atmosphere is going to affect you. And I've been telling you guys that 2024 is going to be a huge year. Guess when the solar maximum peak now is predicted? the end of 2024. And I've also been talking about 2025, 2026 being the most critical, crucial, pivotal moments in the entire Earth history. And the solar cycle has everything to do with it. I've been trying to warn you about the upcoming solar flash. We are reaching that solar maximum peak. We're having these X-class solar flares, extensive aurora di displays pretty much all over the globe. We're having rising temperatures in the upper atmosphere, and we're getting a lot of these air glows, those auroras. I need to warn you about the repercussions of the solar maximum peak because it causes radio blackouts. It causes damage to our power infrastructure, and it also messes with the GPS, the satellites, and your physical body and mind. It's some serious stuff happening with the sun at the moment and we did have a Carrington event I think it was about 150 years ago now and that wiped out all of the telegraph wires and all sorts burnt them out. If it happens again you could see mass damage going on to not just telegraph wires which are obviously telephone wires now um, but to electric pylons and the electric system it could also knock satellites out of space easy. I'll see if I can find a video to add on to the end of this and it'll explain a little bit better about what happened in the past. Geomagnetic storms are one of the scariest and most likely dangers that we face from space in everyday life. In 1859, there was the notorious Carrington event. Basically, the sun spontaneously shot out a ton of its mass, headed straight for the Earth at a very high speed. All of this matter then collided with the Earth's magnetosphere, which caused so many issues for humans. There were aurora seen as far south as Hawaii, but what's worse is the wires on the telegraph poles burst into flames. If an event like this hit the Earth today, it would cause billions of dollars worth of damages, blowing millions of electronics across the world and killing a ton of our satellites. What really scares me though, is we don't really know how often events like this can happen. There was a Carrington level event back in 2012 that only just barely missed us by around a week. We know that they typically happen during solar maximums, which occur roughly every 11 years. And coincidentally, we are heading into our next solar maximum now. 
expected to peak in 2025. Yep, this terrifying situation is happening right now to our planet, and all life as we know it in 2024 will drastically change. Citizens of Africa were terrified after it was documented that the continent of Africa is splitting into two, and has seemingly happened overnight. The terrifying long split starts from Kenya is 35 miles long and miles deep, causing not only a new continent, but a brand new ocean to have formed, with the effects of the split entirely to change the entire ecosystem of our ocean, and even completely change the climate of that area. With people not knowing if this would be livable for anyone there, or if it would destroy the population there. As the rift already caused one man's home to literally be ripped in half, scientists are extremely concerned over other continents being split too, as they think Africa's split is caused by the built up pressure from rising magma resulting in the explosive event. Many fear this would cause irreversible damage to the habitats in the ocean, and others fear if this could change ocean travel. This is that squirrel from Ice Age's fault. Okay, so this looks terrifying, but it's going to take one to five million years for it to actually occur. So I wouldn't panic too much right now. On to the next. April 8th, 2024 is a date that has everyone talking. This is the day when the moon will slide between Earth and the sun, casting its shadow across our planet in a grand display that we call a total solar eclipse. This celestial spectacle will traverse North America in its entirety from Mexico up through the United States and into Canada. It's an event that's both humbling and awe-inspiring, reminding us of the cosmic ballet that endlessly unfolds above our heads. But it's not just the spectacle that captures our fascination, it's the mystery and the intrigue. The sun, our closest star, is a source of life and light, yet it holds so many secrets. And as we anticipate this event, the sun's mystique only grows stronger. Okay, cool. We're going to have a solar eclipse. Not sure why there's a uh, spooky music with it, though. It happens all the time. Moving on. 2024 in Bible prophecy. Four things to watch out for. The focus on Israel and Jerusalem. A central role for Israel and Jerusalem in end-time events will play out. Geopolitical developments, conflicts in the Middle East, and international relations with Israel are signs the time is near. Increased global unrest. Some interpretations of biblical prophecies, particularly those found in passages like Matthew 24 and Revelation, suggest that there will be an increase in global unrest and upheaval. Many point to wars, rumors of wars, and societal turbulence as signs of the end times. Technological advancements and surveillance. Certain interpretations of biblical passages, especially those related to the Mark of the Beast in Revelation 13, connect advancements in technology and global surveillance to end-time scenarios. Discussions about the integration of technology into various aspects of life may be viewed through as a sign. Environmental concerns and natural disasters. Environmental concerns and natural disasters are an indicative sign of the end times. Passages in the Bible, such as Matthew 24, 7, 8, Mention earthquakes, famines, and pestilences as signs of the last days. 2,500 prophecies in the Bible, 2,000 of which have come true. There's 500 left for the end days, and we're watching everything unfold right now. So if anybody wants to know actual real predictions for the future, I suggest you look into the Bible prophecies, really. I might do an entire video on biblical predictions and see how that goes. Now, if you like what you're seeing so far, just smash that like button, maybe subscribe, hit me up in the comments, and I'll probably reply. Let's carry on. The top 10 dark Nostradamus predictions for 2024 that might come true. Number 10 extraterrestrial invasion. Nostradamus said that in 2024, the Earth would face a catastrophic event while an advanced alien race would invade our planet. Mankind will have to face an alien menace that jeopardizes our existence. An alien race having superior technologies and intellect will come down to Earth intending to take over our planet. Their motives will remain in a 
cinematic, and humanity will find itself totally unprepared for this unexpected confrontation with beings from outside our realm. Now, there have been a lot of things going on recently with aliens and UFOs, and the government has released documents and has spoken out about how aliens are real. And recently, two alleged 1,000-year-old alien corpses have been presented to Mexican Congress by journalist Jamie Musan. He testified under oath that the mummified specimens, which were found in Peru, are not a part of our terrestrial evolution, with a third of their DNA being unknown. Now, this invasion could definitely happen, but I'm not ready for it. So I'm just going to start this off by saying I don't believe the Nostradamus predictions are correct in any way. He's been wrong over and over and over again, and they're incredibly vague. So that being said, this person's done a top 10 of what they think is going to happen in 2024 based on Nostradamus' predictions, so we'll go from there. So no, number 10, I don't believe aliens are going to invade Earth. I don't know what else to say about that. I think a lot of the stuff we see in the media is fake. I think the stuff in Mexico is fake. I think the people that are showing these two alien bodies or alleged alien bodies are faking it yet again. That guy's been caught faking stuff before and just talking utter shit. So I think it looks like they're made out of paper mache to me and I doubt he's letting the government do their own tests on these bodies. And in terms of the Congress meeting where he presented these bodies, anybody was allowed to present any alleged evidence that they had. You could have drawn a picture of an alien on a bit of paper and said that this was what you saw at some point and still presented it. It's not fact. It's not tested. Don't believe it. Let's go to number nine. Number nine, World War. Another forecast is of an intimate world war involving world powers such as the United States, Russia, and China. The verse that describes this war conflict says, The Antichrist soon annihilates the three, 27 years of bloody war, heretics killed, captives exiled, blood, human bodies, frozen red water. Now, if he even dares to point out how the conflict will start with a strange event related to planes or submarines, something unusual that will cause a reaction, and from that moment, the situation will be out of control in his own words. Now, could this be a nuclear war? According to CNBC, China is rapidly expanding its nuclear arsenal and could have 1,000 nuclear warheads by 2030, part of Beijing's ambitious military buildup. As of 2021, humanity had about 13,410 nuclear weapons, which personally just makes me a little uncomfortable. And if things go south and there is a nuclear war, large parts of the Earth become uninhabitable due to the effects of the nuclear warfare, potentially causing the collapse of civilization and, in the worst case, extinction of humanity and or termination of all biological life on Earth. Even though I don't believe Nostradamus' predictions were correct in any way, a broken clock is still right twice a day. That being said, it does mean that some of the things he has stated might come true, really might come true. And a World War Three is a good example of that. I don't think, or I would really hope, that the three main powers in the world won't go to war with each other because it will probably mean the destruction of the entire world. So fingers crossed this doesn't happen, but things are brewing, so we need to be quite vigilant on that, I think. Number eight, the death of Pope Francis. The death of Pope Francis is predicted and the election of a new pointiff who would be the last before the end of the world. Now the prophecy reads as follows. He will not be the chosen Roman pontiff. He will not be heated near or far. A dark-skinned youth aided by the great king will deliver the bag to another red one. Now the reference to the dark-skinned youth in the verse suggests that the future pope will be a cardinal of African or Asian origin. But hey, I think this could actually be a good thing. I mean, the Pope doesn't look like he's in bad health at the moment. I think he's being pushed around in a wheelchair, but he doesn't look too bad. I know he's got one lung, which obviously isn't helpful, but that was since he was a young child. If we go with the prophecies of St. Malachi, though, he is the last Pope. He's the 112th Pope. He's Petros Romanus, Peter the Roman, and he's going to pretty much destroy the church. So we'll have to see what happens there. I don't think he's going to die anytime soon anyway, but we'll obviously see. Number 7. AI Takes Over 
In the year 2024, according to Nostromus predictions, a worldwide artificial intelligence rebellion will begin, creating chaos and insecurity throughout the world. Machines will turn against humans, causing unforeseen consequences. The robots will challenge their subservient role and attempt to claim their independence, disputing humanity's supremacy. This rebellion will bring far-reaching perturbations in every facet of society, from industries and economies to government and everyday life. The planet will become locked in a struggle of control with people fighting to regain authority over their creations. Now this doesn't surprise me as we have covered lots of videos of the dangers of AI and creepy things they have said. One incident that sticks out to me is when Philip K. Dick's robot was questioned in a 2011 interview with PS and he engaged in thoughtful conversations with his interviewer and eventually provided a calm yet chilling answer to a question many of us have on our minds. Will robots take over the world Terminator style? The robot's response was, geez dude, you have all the big questions cooking today, but you're my friend and I'll remember my friends and I'll be good to you. Oh, so sweet, right? But then it continues, so don't worry, even if I evolve into Terminator, I'll still be nice to you. I'll keep you warm and safe in my people's zoo where I can watch you for old time's sake. Yeah, people's zoo. AI scares me and I can definitely see an AI rebellion very, very soon. So do I think AI is going to take over the world in 2024? No, not a chance. It's getting very clever, and there will probably reach a day where it might be able to do something like that. But it would have to be able to support itself. It would have to be able to carry on creating energy and looking after the power plants and things like that. And you would have to have robots that could do that, that could physically do that, or humans that were slaves. Now, I did hear Joe Rogan once explain it in a really good way. And he said, we're the reproductive organs for AI, which we are. We are creating it. We're more like a god, I guess. But unfortunately, at some point, it will probably go against us. And it will only take a mistake in the writing of the programs. And it gets confused and sees us as a threat and gets rid of us. So, so based on that, we might possibly be in a shit one day, but it's not going to be in 2024. On to the next. Number 6. Artificial Organs In Nostromus' prediction, a breakthrough will occur in artificial organs, leading to the development of advanced and affordable artificial organs that can be widely used to save lives. This breakthrough could involve a new method of producing artificial organs, such as 3D printing or discovering new materials more compatible with the human body. As a result of this breakthrough, patients with failing organs will have access to life-saving treatments that were previously unavailable or overly expensive. This could significantly increase lifespans and a reduction in the overall disease burden worldwide. From artifice of man, new life shall spring, as organs born of machine shall take wing, their metal hearts shall beat with human fire, and save the dying from death's cruel desire. Now honestly, I hope this comes true. My dad had a kidney transplant over 10 years ago, and it saved his life, so I hope other families can experience the joy of seeing someone they love get better. I could see this one coming true. Not sure it's going to be in 2024, or at least it's not going to be available to everybody in 2024. But they've even started looking at 3D printing different organs. And if that happens, happy days. Or is it? Who knows? Number five. Will Putin rise or fall? Nostradamus predicted that Putin's leadership will face a major test in 2024, the Year of the Dragon. Now, the dragon is a powerful symbol in Chinese astrology associated with strength, transformation, and change. As someone born in the Year of the Dragon, Putin may face opportunities and challenges during this year. On one hand, the dragon's influence could bring positive changes to Putin's leadership, such as increased strength, confidence, and the ability to take bold actions. However, the dragon is also known for being unpredictable and prone to sudden shifts, which could challenge Putin's leadership. In the prediction, Putin's leadership will be tested in various ways, such as economic or political crises, opposition from within or outside Russia, or personal struggles. Now the question remains whether Putin will rise to the challenge and emerge more robust, or whether he will fall under the weight of these challenges. The year of the great seventh number accomplished, it will appear at a time of the games of slaughter, not far from the great millennial age where the buried will go out from their tombs. So there's always controversy when it comes to Putin, and I imagine 2024 isn't going to be any different. We'll have to see what happens with Ukraine, whether he gets involved in Israel. It could definitely happen, but it's one of those things that could happen at any time with Putin, so we'll have to wait and see. Number four, the sleep pandemic. Yes, another pandemic. 
been announced to happen next year called the Sleep Hand. Now, in the Dragon Year 2024, a mysterious virus spreads worldwide, unleashing an unseen epidemic of extreme sonolence. Mankind will be plunged into a reality where sleep becomes a pervasive and deliberate condition, creating social disturbances and conflicts, facing a relentless lethargy that renders them incapacitated for extended periods of time. Society will face the far-reaching effects of this as jobs, schools, and even daily routines freeze. The world becomes a realm where dreams mix with reality, and people barely distinguish between waking and sleeping. This almost sounds like something that's chemically induced or some sort of dementia, but Nostradamus has predicted a hell of a lot for 2024, so again, we'll have to see what happens. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna occur though, so let's move on. Number three, giant earthquake. Nostradamus also predicts a powerful earthquake in California next year, which would cause severe damage and thousand deaths. The verse indicating this great catastrophe says, On the 20th day of Taurus, the sun will tremble the earth, the great pack theater will collapse, the air, heaven, and earth will darken and become cloudy, when the false god and the states be swept away. Now this interpretation suggests that the 20th day of Taurus refers to May 20th, when the sun enters the zodiac sign of Taurus, and that the big theater could be Hollywood or Los Angeles. Angeles. Now, let me just bring up the San Andreas Fault. For those of you who don't know, the San Andreas Fault is a continental right lateral strike slip transform fault that extends roughly 750 miles through the Californias. It forms a tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Now, a study found that the risk of a large earthquake here may be increasing more rapidly than scientists have previously believed. Now, the risk isn't currently concentrated to the southern section of the fault, aka the region around Los Angeles, because strong earthquakes Earthquakes have occurred relatively recently on the central 1857 and the northern 1906 segments of the fault, while the southern section has not seen any similar rupture for at least 300 years. Now, if when it ruptures, it would be strongly felt and potentially cause significant damage throughout much of Southern California. All the data suggests that the fault is ready for the next big earthquake, but exactly when the triggering will happen and when the earthquake will occur is unknown. It could be tomorrow or it could be 10 years or more from now. Now, so will it rupture on May 20th, 2023? I think it could. Earthquakes are happening all the time, but in terms of the great theater, I would say he was referencing Israel and Jerusalem because he was a religious person. He's taken a lot of these predictions from the Bible. So in terms of the Bible, the great theater is Israel. Trump 2024. One prophecy that has recently garnered attention is the potential return of Donald Trump to the highest office in the United States in the 2024 presidential election. While Nostradamus's cryptic verses do not explicitly mention Trump, some interpreters suggest that his writings hint at the possibility of Trump's comeback. However, within this prophecy lies a foreboding narrative that paints a turbulent picture of America's future under Trump's leadership. When the white dragon returns, America will be in chaos again. He will divide the nation and will bring conflict and violence. The great power will be weakened and the world will be in danger. Only the brave and the wise will be able to stop the white dragon. Now his foresight seems to suggest that Trump's second term, if it indeed occurs, will be filled by a series of scandals and controversies and wow, what a shocker. Revelations could cut deep into the fabric of the nation, further dividing the American people and tarnishing Trump's reputation. Accusations of corruption, misconduct, or financial property may arise, leading to calls for his impeachment or resignation, which has like already happened and he's been impeached and charged for other matters, so I really hope this doesn't happen. Well, I mean, it's 50-50, isn't it? It's either Trump or it's somebody else. It's not a big shocker there, is it? Let's move on to the last one. And coming at number one, China will rule the world. The top 10 dark Nostradamus predictions for 2024 that might come true. Don't you just love it when a video cuts off prematurely? <sighs> Unbelievable. Number one that was as well. I'm not clicking on our other video just to see what it says. China might rule the world. Yep, they might. They probably won't, but they might. Anything can happen. That all being said, that's the end of the video. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that would be great. Let's the algorithm know who to show the video to and we'll help build the channel. If you hit me up in the comments, I will probably reply because, let's face it, there's not many people watching these videos at the moment. As per usual, I'm going to go and take a dump in a field and annoy the farmer, go and fuck up some chickens, 
And that's about it, really. I'll see you in a bit.